Hello everybody. Hi, this is Dr. Chetan Fadke here and today I'm going to talk a little bit about what is a good diet for human beings. So let me introduce this. I'm planning to do a series, maybe four or five episodes in the series and the series title is what is a good diet for human beings and the first episode is going to be what did ancient humans eat. So I put together a presentation here that talks about that and subsequently maybe next week once every week I'll prepare some uh, some of my thoughts on different subjects like you uh, like you can see here some of you can see here for second episode would be what insights do our physiology and anatomy provide the third episode would be what do the world religions tell us about our diets and fourth episode would be overcoming nature do we have to eat what nature has designed us for and number fifth would be the final episodes uh, episode of the series and it would be spiritual moral and scientific principles to guide our choices so again the series is what is a good diet for human beings and the first episode is what did ancient humans eat all right so let's look at some of the evidence and uh, try and understand if we can see what uh, uh, what proof there is out there uh, in terms of what did ancient humans eat all right, so let me first talk about the Neanderthals. Neanderthal is uh, one of the uh, one of our uh, ancient humans, one of our uh, forefathers. And Neanderthal was actually in the in, in European continent. And there's a nice study that came out a couple of years ago that threw a new light on uh, what the Neanderthal's diet was like. And to do that, they actually found a mummified uh, fecal matter so in other words uh, mummified poop from Neanderthal uh, sample Neanderthal uh, uh, fossil so they examined that and uh, did some analysis on it and what they found was as expected they found high levels of cholesterol in it so as you can imagine cholesterol comes from animal foods so in other words Neanderthal man was eating a diet rich in cholesterol meaning rich in animal foods all right but what was surprising was they also found a number of different types of cholesterol-like molecules, which I've highlighted here. They're all from plants. So this was a study that uh, uh, really suggested that Neanderthals also had some plant materials in their diet and not just animal foods. All right, so that's Neanderthal, but that's pretty much in Europe, in European continent. What about the rest of the world? So let's look at Homo erectus and what was their diet like. Homo erectus was uh, in Indonesia and China, Africa, and so on. So I saw a nice paper that um, looked at the different types of evidence and suggested that the diet of Homo erectus was predominantly from animal meat and from marrow. So that was where they got most of the calories from. And they supplemented that with some honey and some ground tubers as well. However, there was limited evidence for fire in the period of Homo erectus. So fire would be critical in order to use the tuber, it's tuber meaning the root, like potatoes and uh, taro and yuca and all those types of root, uh, starchy roots. You actually need to use fire to release the nutritional bounty, so to speak, from these tubers. So it's unlikely that they used a whole lot of plants in their diet, they had some but it was predominantly animal type of diet. All right, so we looked at Neanderthals, we looked at Homo erectus, and the evidence suggests that they ate predominantly animal foods, supplemented that with some plant-based foods. All right, so little, these are our distant ancestors, you know. Uh, I'm not an expert in archeology, span but you know, more than 50,000 uh, years ago. So let's come a little closer, you know, 5,000 years ago, let's see what ancient Egyptians ate and there's a lot of interest in Egyptians and their culture and we can infer a lot because they mummified a lot of their bodies. So what does the ancient Egyptian diet look like? So first of all I found a nice study that uh, looked at carbon isotope ratios. So they looked at the carbon content and the type of carbon content that comes from hair. So they analyzed that to try and uh, pinpoint what sort of diet they had. And they found something called a C3 derived food. 
So C3 is carbon-3. And why is that important? They find that most, uh, most of uh, the ancient Egyptians, they relied on their, their hair protein contained C3 derived food. So what is C3 derived food? It's uh, C3 is derived pretty much from plants, from plant groups such as vegetables, cereals and fruit. Uh, so in other words, it so looks like ancient Egyptian diet was derived from plants. And as a matter of fact, this paper also suggested that the Egyptians consumed large amounts of cereals through bread and beer and also ate vegetables, onions and lettuce and legumes. All right, so that's interesting. So compared to our Neanderthals and uh, uh, Homo erectus cousins, or ancestors, the Egyptians seem to be eating more uh, cereals and more plant-based foods. And meat was actually a very small percentage of the diet of people. Uh, and ex uh, the exception was, of course, the wealthy people. The wealthy people ate a lot of animal proteins. All right, so uh, what else? Uh, what was their diet? What was the proportion of meat like or pr me proteins from meat like? So this paper suggested that 29% of uh, their diet came from protein. So <clears throat> animal protein represents 29%. So this proportion is similar actually to the present day ovo lacto vegetarians. So ovo lacto means uh, people who eat who are vegetarians, but they eat milk and eggs in their diet. So 32% of their calories were from protein. So that's similar to 29% in the ancient Egyptians. And lower than the, it's actually far lower than the present day omnivores, present day omnivores about 64% of their calories from animal protein. So you can see that ancient Egyptians ate close to 30% of their protein from animals. And uh, so you can, you can think of this as uh, significantly less protein than what current humans, the modern day humans eat. All right, so uh, we've noticed that there's a difference in what poor people eat versus what the wealthy people eat. And uh, let's look at some examples of mummies, all right? So mummies, they've done a nice work. They're trying to uh, scan the mummies and image them to see if their uh, arteries can be visualized. And there was a very nice study published where they found that, you know, close to 40 to 50, 40, 50% of all mummies they studied showed signs of atherosclerosis, meaning the arteries were hardened, meaning they had heart disease. All right, so that's very interesting. However, earlier we said that most Egyptians ate plants, plant-based food, cereals, vegetables, and so on. So why did they get heart disease? It's a good question, eh? Because current belief is that eating foods that are high in saturated fats result in atherosclerosis. So this is called Egyptian paradox uh, of the mummies. So if they eat lower meat than present day humans, why did they have such a high rate of atherosclerosis? Good question. Was a mummy really a regular Joe? Or was a mummy really a regular Tut? Anyway, we talked about this earlier, but the authors that scanned the mummies to look for arterial disease, this is what they wrote in the article. They said that we determined the social position for 25 mummies out of 40 or so. And each of these was of high socioeconomic status. The, uh, the 27 mummies, they did not really know the social position. However, they said that the financial costs of mummification suggest that they too were likely of high economic status. All right, so we've uh, demonstrated that people who were of high socioeconomic status, they were most likely to become uh, uh, a mummy. And when they scanned those mummies, they found risk of uh, actually signs of heart disease. So it suggests that people who ate actually more animal-based diet in the past also had heart disease. Anyway, that's a different question. We're going with talking about diet. So let's move a little further, look, about, look at ancient Roman diet. And there are some uh, uh, articles that show that the Romans, Roman tradition had a diet rich in breads wine and oil. So that's interesting. Breads, wine and oil. These are all animal products. Uh, sorry. These are all plant-based products if you think about them. Bread, wine and oil. 
This paper goes on to talk about the rich classes love the fresh fish. We ate it mostly fried or with olive oil or oysters, seafood, and so on. Whereas slaves of Rome, the poor, their diet consisted of bread and half a pound of olives. So interesting. Again, this is the same tradition as the Egyptians. The poor ate more carbohydrates or more plant-based foods, cereals and such. Whereas the rich people ate more animal-based foods. All right. So we have looked at different uh, time periods and looked at some evidence to think about what were people eating in those days. So just to summarize, early human diet included animal sources, whereas some vegetable sources. The Egyptian and the Roman diet, which is a more recent diet, predominantly had plant sources, some animal sources, and there was a big difference between what the rich ate and what the poor ate. So some of this uh, we can attribute to our development, the development of humanity. Back in the days when we were hunting, we didn't really have, uh, we probably didn't have, we didn't, we hadn't invented fire. So we couldn't really cook things or we didn't, we hadn't uh, invented farming. So that's why our food was pre pretty much from hunting, fish, animals, and so on, and a little bit of vegetable sources. Whereas as humanity, as it advanced, as civilization advanced, we were able to harness uh, farming, raise more plants, and that became the predominant source to feed the poor in particular. So there you go, folks. We looked at some of the evidence to understand what people in the past ate. That's it for today. And I hope to connect with you again soon. Take care. Have a good night.